Right after I had graduated from college, I played uh, collegiate basketball for four years, and um, so everything was just kind of winding down, and I figured that this was just a good time to start over because the relationship wasn't working. Three weeks later, I find out that I'm pregnant. He immediately said that I needed to go get an abortion. Finally, it just got to the point where I just broke down and finally made the call. And I walk into this very large waiting room with at least 40, 50 girls. And all the chairs were teen magazines, Seventeen and Cosmo. It was just kind of this idea that look at what, you know, you'll get back. I was just in this horrible, you know, dark state. And the first thing that they do is they take a sonogram. And however, they wouldn't allow me to look at the sonogram. She said it would just make it harder. And they explained that the medicine that they need to give me is um, a, a cross between Valium and uh, some form of a pain medicine. They said, as a matter of fact, you probably won't remember most of the procedure because they don't put you under. And as far as I'm concerned, that sounded great. Like double dose me, you know, that, the last thing I want to do is be remembering this. I knew I was going to spend $280 that day on an abortion. And she said, when's the last time you used drugs or alcohol? And the night before, I had drank um, with my uh, very good friend. She threw down her clipboard and she said, well, we can't do this today then. I said, well, then do it anyway. Don't give me the medicine. And she said, okay, you owe us $80 for the sonogram and we need to schedule you for next Wednesday. And I say, I'm gonna get an abortion and I'm gonna give you a shot to talk me out of it. And they had just recently received a sonogram machine um, and she said, let's, uh, let's take a look at that baby in there. And then I see my daughter for the first time and I see her heartbeat. I'm seeing this very vibrant, living creature inside of me. And there was just no going back from there. Hi, I'm Jordan, come in. Let me show you around. This is my poster that my mom gave me. I'm not a perfect girl. My hair doesn't always stay in place. I spill things a lot. I'm pretty clumsy, but when I take a step back, I remember how amazing life truly is, and through all my imperfections, God still loves me. Ten years ago, um, I was at a luncheon with Ann Carruth, and she started talking to me about her idea for a council of women to raise money for the resource centers. Then the group of us said yes. Originally there were 11 women who were founding members of the council. We all shared a deep commitment as Christians and we believe strongly in the sanctity of life. And that was because we had really searched the scriptures and we found out that God loves life and he values it and because he values it, we should value it too. Our mission statement is to empower women, men, and youth to make life-affirming choices. My wife and I for quite some time had looked for an organization outside of our church that we could support. And with three young children, there was nothing more prevalent in our lives than the beauty of our children, and Council for Life is a perfect fit for that. Why the council made such a huge impact on me is that women have a choice and my mom was 20 years old unmarried and had to make a choice living in san francisco california back in the 60s and she chose life if you can encourage women to see beyond their circumstance they have a human being inside of them that is life that is someone that's going to continue on and play an important role in the lives of other people i had gone through some post-abortion counseling. That had really changed my life. I actually just got back from Mount Rainier. We put on 50 pound backpacks. And about five hours in, I was hurting. My friends just started taking the items out of my backpack. They say, hey, we're gonna carry this for you. Why don't you go on up? What, what a cool picture that is to what Council for Life did for me. They helped me take the weight off my backpack and help me get up to the top of that mountain. We have such a task ahead of us because you have to change their heart. You can't, it's gotta be already there. It's gotta be there before they're in crisis. It's just gotta be the way they think. And so this girl was reached. And because of that, we have a daughter. <laughs> My first abortion, I was a senior in high school, 17 years old, dating 
the all-star football player in high school. My second abortion, I had just left my first husband for another man. I learned behavior that I learned from my father. My third abortion was the hardest, the most difficult, because I had just come to know Jesus. But I could not ever tell anybody the choices I made that I was responsible for, because what would they think? My way of dealing with it was running, perfectionism, looking good, um, while all at the same, I was dying inside. But you know what? God wanted me whole. He wanted me to be free, to do the things that He created me to do. I would say to the woman who's had an abortion and lives in that um, in darkness and in guilt and shame that you don't have to live like that. And God has, loves you and has already forgiven you. And if He can forgive you, who are you not to forgive yourself? I'm grateful that someone saw where I was and didn't give up on me. And that's what Council for Life does. Not only do they have people within our organization available to reach out, to listen, to pray, they love you right where you are. What a powerful impact that, that Council for Life has in just being able to, to stamp the grace of Christ on these men's hearts. What we're trying to do is change the hearts and minds of people in our community and in our culture to a culture of life. Give that baby a chance. and because he's, he's got a big plan for him. And you don't know what God has in store for that person that you're carrying inside of you. They're loved by God, they're formed by God, they're his masterpiece. One child at a time, one mother at a time, and as we change these mothers, we'll change a nation and a world. Who knows what that plan is for that saved little boy or little girl? And you know, they might end, end up being a doctor and saving my children's life one day, I don't know. The biggest gift one can give is the gift of life. My name is Jordan and I love life.